Today we're going to take a look at a late 90s MTX Blue Thunder amplifier. A lot of times people ask me, hey, why did you stop doing all these old school amp tests? That's what we really want to see. Now I still do these type videos, but they don't give the interest or the views of the new products that I test. And still like 63% of y'all are not subscribed. So if you could make sure you go to Wilson Audio Labs, click on the subscribe and make sure you choose all on the drop down. That way you get notified whenever I drop a video. And yeah, if you guys like these old school videos, just let me know by watching them, sharing them, liking them, all that fun stuff. Now back to the program at hand. Let's go to a 1998 Car Audio and Electronics directory and look at MTX under the Blue Thunder section. The Pro 1502, 75 watts by two, $475 is the retail price back then. However, adjusted for inflation, it's almost $900 in today's money. Yo! We also found a couple really cool ads. These were sold at Circuit City and other major retailers. Also, in the May 1997 Car Audio and Electronics, they actually tested this amp, along with other models from Audio Control and Precision Power, including the Power Class series. But believe it or not, the Blue Thunder Pro 1502 came out on top. Sound quality, power, pretty much everything in the list you can look here. It uh, scored really well and got first place. So this amp is maybe a hidden sleeper for those who don't know about it. But um, yeah, top score in sound quality, highest power output, lowest noise, lowest distortion, flawless, all those. So let's uh, take a closer look at the one that I have here. We'll talk about it, we'll test it, we'll have all kind of fun. So let's look here on the one side. You can see not a whole lot going on here. It just has the gain, an EQ, which is 40 hertz, 0 to 18 dB, crossover for 90 hertz or down at 18 dB. It's only low pass and it has a high level input as well as standard RCA jacks. Now this amp has been sitting in my collection for quite a while and the screw down terminals here were actually a little bit rusty. So I decided to go ahead and put these in a little plastic cup and use some evaporust. And um, yeah, let's see how they turn out. The next day. Yeah, this evaporust is pretty cool. It um, brought these gold plated screws pretty much into new looking condition. You can see here on the amp, it looks really nice. Here on this side, you'll see the 230 amp fuses, a power LED, battery ground remote, and also the dual speaker outputs there. It is a two channel, rated 75 watts by two at four ohms, 150 by two at two ohms, 300 watts bridged at four ohms, dynamic power as well up to 425 watts at four ohms. Dimensions 9.3 inches by nine inches by 2.1 inches. So pretty compact for an old school amp. Now let's get it wired up, fire up. The SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, is if you guys are like me, really curious to see what kind of true power this amp puts out. On the left, we'll see the RMS power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote from the clamp so that we can calculate efficiency. This here's my favorite part. Since this is a two channel amp, we will start off in stereo mode, four ohms. It's rated 75 watts by two. The certified test takes us up to 1% distortion. And yeah, 123 and 115, so easily that 75 watts. Now it is rated at 12.8 volts and is rated a low THD, but we can't, you know, be splitting hairs here. We can't, we test all our amps the same way. So there you go, 123 and 115 up to clipping as well. And dynamically it does almost identical as well. 123, 116, right a little bit over 14 volts, about 14.2. Efficiency with this being a class AB amp is not going to be good. 58% at 4 ohms. Now let's try 2 ohms. Amp is rated 150 watts by 2. Again at 12.8, we're going to be around 14 volts. Certified test first and 1% distortion. We are using the 1 kilohertz track. 230 and 215. Again, you should not expect the channels to be exact. You know, just a couple watts here and there is not going to be enough for you to notice via your ear. 233 and 215 up to clipping. Let's try dynamic, send a pulse tone into the amp. This um, is kind of like the IHF202 test if we had 14.4 volts. This amp does not have a whole lot of dynamic power as you can see, 222 and 206. Efficiency around 59% at two ohms, so it didn't drop much between four ohms and two. Now let's try one ohm stereo. The amp is not rated to handle one ohm and we really just did the dynamic test here at one kilohertz. You can see crazy power here. 377, 360, right at 14 volts. 
Now we're gonna bridge the amplifier using the left positive, right negative, so that we can try mono. Four ohms mono, it's rated 300 watts. We're using a 40 hertz tone for this, simulating a subwoofer. We got 430 watts at 13.8 volts. Good power. Uncertified up to clipping. Let's see if we can beat that number. Yes, 449 at 13.77. What about dynamically? If it's like the other test, it does not do big dynamic numbers. And you can see here, it's actually a little less than the others. 418 at 14.12. Efficiency bridged at four ohms, 40 hertz is around 54%. Again, this is what you expect from these old school class AB amps. Two ohms mono, it is not rated to handle two ohms mono. Let's try uncertified up to clipping. We did try the certified test, but it did not run cleanly. So we just jumped to the uncertified test. 521 watts at 13.46, handled it like a boss. Did not pop the fuses, um, but we didn't also let the test run very long. It probably would if you tried this in a car environment. You probably have to upgrade those fuses or you just not even do it. Dynamically 700 watts at 13.8 at two ohms, nice power. Here are all the results. You can see four ohms, two ohms, and one ohm stereo mode. Did more than rated power and actually did the one ohm burst mode over 750 watts. And then bridged, eight ohms, four ohms, two ohms, did more than rated power, including up to 700 watts at two ohms in the burst mode. Now compared to Carlin Electronics, they got 128 watts by two at four ohms, 206 by two at two ohms and 412 bridge, so very close. Now these old school amps got nice and toasty on the outside, get out your egg and fry it 117, 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's find out what's inside 25 year old amplifier from MTX cost $425 back in the day. Equates to much more today. You can see here on the bottom, we have these plastic mounting feet, which unfortunately tend to break. As you'll see one I'm gonna show here is broken, unfortunately, but some people are reprinting those today using 3D printers. Here on the side, we'll take out this one screw that holds in the RCAs, and we'll talk about that in a minute, why I don't like these type of RCA jacks, not just because Tiffany is my friend. There is actually a reason. These things have tiny, tiny hex screws in order to get these four out where the fuses are. Looks like when MTX assembled this amp, they put the sticker on the bottom last. And as you can see here, I've got all the screws out. This plate has to go this way before it can go up. Same thing on the other side. It has to go this way before it goes up. So anybody who has this particular amp, I'm actually gonna put a note on the inside that it wasn't worked on. It's just that I had to cut this to be able to get inside the amp so we can see what the guts look like. Don't do it. Oh, makes me sad to have to do that. There we go. Here's the insides of the Blue Thunder Pro 1502 amplifier. You can see this class AB layout here. And here it is on the board. This was made 11797, at least that's when the board was made. 35 volt, 2200 microfarad there for the capacitors. And there's some different size as well. Just a nice laid out amp. Now we talked about the RCA jacks. And the reason I don't like these board mounted RCA jacks is because look, they, they really flex. When you push your RCA jacks in, they can flex on the board. That's why the panel mount or Tiffany style RCAs are better because they actually mount to the panel itself and they're much more secure mounting. That's not why I like them. So here you can see somebody signed it on the board, probably the engineer. We also went ahead and wrote down the measurements on the bottom panel. That way if somebody ever gets this, then you know. Now let's try it out and see how it sounds. If you want to hear more demos, I'm actually doing a separate video of this bandpass speaker enclosure and I'll do several songs so you can hear that. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the video description when the video is ready. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this 25 year old MTX Blue Thunder amp. 
Does rated power plus. It is 25 years old and still working. Has a variable bass boost, 0 to 18 dB at 40 hertz. Screw down terminals, which for old school amps is pretty good. 90 hertz, 18 dB per octave low pass crossover. Two channel or bridge. It actually will work in a three channel mode as well. Has 30 amp fuses for easy access. Things to consider, it has low efficiency as a class AB gets very hot. Standard RCA is not Tiffany. Has a fixed crossover, not variable. The mounting feet break easily. It is 25 years old, so I'm not sure I'd use this in a daily. The LED is red only. It's not green when you turn it on, it's red. So there's no discerning between protection and not. And I was totally bummed that I had to cut the sticker on the bottom to show you guys the guts. This amp has not been opened probably since 1997, and we just did it 25 years later so we could do the test. But it was fun. The amp performed well. Old school MTX for the win. Thanks as always for you guys for watching. Check me out at patreon.com slash old school stereo if you want to support and you want to see more videos like this. I greatly appreciate you guys. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here.